All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, it's time for another gas monologue here by Sagar. But I promise you all this time, it's not the gas that you're thinking of. We've talked a lot here on the show about the structural problems that belay the high gas prices right now. And while I have touched on other areas of energy, like diesel and other markets, one market that we spent less time on, but still tremendously important for all of our daily lives, is natural gas. So it's difficult to state the impact that natural gas revolution has had on American life over the last two decades. It's a cheap and reliable source of power across the country. It's become a major global commodity, and it has underwritten the economic growth of much of the West, India, and China now for almost two decades. None of us paid that much attention until COVID, especially until the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And like those two things, we are now paying the price for globalization. Here in the U.S., natural gas makes up 40% of all power that we produced in 2021 alone. The key difference between the U.S. and the rest of the world is, though, that we make a ton of it. In Europe, they get 25% of their power from natural gas. The problem for them, though, is they're the largest importer in the world. And guess who provides the vast majority of that gas? Russia, who gives them approximately 40% of all gas they consumed just last year before the invasion. Part of the reason for this is Russia is, of course, geographically close. The Russians have cheap gas, much cheaper than having to import it from faraway countries. Now, with the invasion of Ukraine, we've seen a commitment by the Europeans to cut themselves off not only from Russian oil, but to taper from Russian gas with the cancellation of the Nord Stream pipeline and more. The problem, though, is that they still need power, so they have to buy it from somewhere. And the shortage in natural gas markets and the disruption is not being felt by you at a consumer level in the same way. But the current craziness of the market may still and actually have even more of a destabilizing effect on all of us than high prices at the pump. The real crisis could actually just be beginning. Natural gas is already up 700% over last year because of the demand increase in the Russian invasion. This has caused complete chaos in Europe where energy prices are skyrocketing. And even here at home where cooling bills and soon heating bills will be out of control expensive. The world may not be ready for a genuinely cataclysmic event, which is only a few days away. Exactly four days from right now, Russia is going to completely shut down the Nord Stream 1 pipeline that carries natural gas to Europe. That shutdown is scheduled to last only 11 days. But the Germans are now saying it may not ever get turned back on, as they have already cut natural gas flows to Germany by some 60%. The German ministers are describing it as, quote, economic warfare by Russia in retaliation for Western sanctions. Given the tremendous reliance by Germany, Italy, and other major European economies on gas, a total shutoff could spark a legitimate crisis. Already, Germany has laid out a plan to ration natural gas and power, meaning literal rolling blackouts across the country, even if they do try to back up their grids with coal. Their union ministers are talking about the sheer collapse of German industry, which relies on Russian gas if a shutoff is extended, and the biggest problem remains infrastructure and globalization. Right now, natural gas prices in America are actually cheaper than the rest of the world. Yes, also because we make it here, but actually a worse reason. There was a fire at the Freeport in Texas where natural gas is liquefied and exported. That fire shut down the facility for a minimum of 90 days, meaning that if it can't be exported, then the supply is higher here at home. It was a temporary reprieve, which is not gonna last. The moment the Freeport facility is back online, it's gonna be booming business with European and Asian tankers who are desperate for American natural gas. That is going to equalize prices here at home with global ones, meaning all of us will be paying a hell of a lot more, but the worst part is that none of this is even still going to work. The Europeans are surging natural gas facilities, but that's not going to backfill what the Russians have been providing them. A sheer lack of infrastructure on the continent means they are plainly screwed almost no matter what if the Russians cut them off. Furthermore, it's not like the West is the whole world. While yes, Germany is almost certainly going to ration, as is the rest of the continent, third world countries are plunging into complete chaos already. Pakistan, whose entire grid is built on cheap LNG, is having rolling blackouts in the middle of the summer for up to 12 hours. Thailand is on the brink of fuel shortage because it can't afford expensive natural gas, and the rest of the world is turning to straight up coal to just power their grids because it's cheaper, more accessible than gas, and that is a disaster for CO2 output. In short, 
we are watching in real time, an unraveling of the global economy. Germany is about to post a trade deficit for the first time since 1991, revealing that their economy and the Eurozone was fake all along. Their trade surplus with the world was underwritten by cheap nat Russian natural gas, which they use to manufacture goods and then export them at a profit to the rest of the world. That's over. The decline of the biggest European continental power and the cornerstone of the euro currency hit its 20-year low just yesterday. I don't have to be a genius to figure out that when the German economy goes into recession suddenly, it's not usually good news for Europe or for the rest of the world. This time, the consequences could be dire as well, because the structural effect of a German recession effectively means an energy shortage for the entire world. And don't forget, just like with oil, High energy prices bleed into everything. They increase not only home bills, but increase the production price across the board for all goods worldwide, not just the ones here and in the US. As far as solutions, you all know what I think. Build nuclear power plants across the globe. Do it now, but I know we're not going to. So instead, all of us are about to suffer big time. The 1970s are back, and we have got a Carter-like figure in the White House, a recession, and the attendant chaos that comes with the decade is here to stay. They said in the 80s that the 70s were revenge for the 60s, and the 2020s then are the revenge for the hubris of the 2000s. The bad part is that we're the ones who have to pay the price this time. And I really couldn't get over when I was looking at the rationing. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.